All right, guys, let's get started. So uh, today it's all about cloth sculpting in ZBrush. Um, I'll show you guys uh, a range of techniques uh, that are related either to cloth sculpting itself or uh, how can we use things that we have generated in a marvelous designer, like cloth stamps that we can use on our garments. You know, folds themselves, they're usually quite round, right? Like this is what we expect a fold to be in terms of cross-section there. But of course, once in a while, on top of something, we will wind up with surfaces that look like this, you know, which are memory wrinkles. Um, there's a few of them here on this uh, particular dress, on this image of a dress there that we can see, right? So memory wrinkles, you know, they form because the surface uh, compresses a lot. And then at some point, the surface starts to break, just like you have uh, folds on a piece of paper if you keep folding it there. Um, so in every way they are different. Uh, memory folds in every way are the opposite of what uh, an actual uh, real fold is, if I could use that term in this case here, right? Uh, so where folds are round, a memory fold is sharp. Uh, where we have those nice eyes uh, on a memory, uh, on a regular fold that is nice and round, on memory wrinkles you guys can see that at every point they are very pointy there and there is no roundness to it so um you know when you start to combine these two together you start to get some really really interesting results visually speaking and it's very easy to add these memory wrinkles it's literally just damn standard that's all it is it's just a damn standard uh over the surface there uh but while i'm damn standarding this i'm also kind of thinking through uh, the placement of the memory wrinkles, the size of the memory wrinkles, these sorts of things. So the key isn't in the technique as much as it is into placing them in the proper locations and these sorts of things, you know? If you kind of think through the garment and you're like, okay, so... Um, memory wrinkles are like wrinkles that have been embedded within the surface there. So, you know, if I imagine... When I was sculpting this, I was kind of imagining that maybe like this kind of lab coat had kind of um, rested on the ground, rested on something, and started, to, like the bottom of it, this kind of zone here, has started to get folded over itself for like a lot and had kind of stayed in that particular place, right? So you can start to imagine, let's take the damp center brush, let's lower our intensity a little bit. You can start to imagine that, that you start to have memory wrinkles kind of building up like this uh, in different places and uh, that are kind of horizontal, then eventually these would start to become a bit more vertical, these sorts of things, you know? Like the thing with memory wrinkles is that um, they're often quite random in terms of direction. Their direction doesn't necessarily follow the direction of folds, you know? Here I have one big fold and there's a big fold here, uh, but I wanna make memory wrinkles that don't necessarily follow that because if they follow that too nicely or too too closely there, it's gonna look a little, um, it's gonna look a little boring there, right? So. The way that I do though is that I, I just start by putting down a bunch of uh, streaks like these using damp standard uh, that are going inward, right? And then afterward, I use the damp standard and I simply press out to inverse the direction of the damp standard brush. And I just start to create uh, once more, like I, I kind of want to do uh, kind of diamonds again, you know, but not necessarily full diamonds like these, just like, just, just do like, the top or the bottom one, like do almost triangles. Um, and I will often like do one uh, positive stroke for one negative stroke that I have. Uh, and that's it, you know, like you you can curve these a little bit. You'll see that sometimes you'll, you'll see these be kind of a little bit curvy like that. That does happen. Um, so it's interesting not to be too, too precise with this, I suppose. Uh, trying to make just straight lines, you know, and you can definitely have uh, positive ones or negative ones that are by themselves too, you know, it's not like everything needs to be positive, negative, positive, uh, negative there, but it does give a nice rhythm to the whole thing if you do do like one that's positive, one that's negative, one that's negative, one that's positive, one that's negative once that's positive and you just kind of always kind of vary the size of them right so the combination of all these will um and like you can even make some of these that are crossing over you know i could definitely have one like that uh but that's it there's really nothing more to it than that um okay let's talk about um let, let's bring marlis designer into the mix here a little bit and uh see a, a few techniques involving marlis designer and 
maybe something that has been extracted out of Mars Designer that you want to continue to work on. Um, how can we really spice up those folds within ZBrush there uh, after the fact? Now, take a look at this. Let me take internal lines. And let me just break up here, create a bit of a ragged edge uh, around the border of this little square that I have. If you want to make these busy points, by the way, you just have to... Uh, every time you press to add a point, you just have to drag at the same time. Drag your mouse at the same time, and you'll add these busy points in different places. Okay, and now let me double click on one internal line to select it. Double click again to select all the internal lines within that particular panel. Let's break it all off. And let's uh, freeze everything but the center portion. In fact, I mean, truth be told, I could actually delete these. I don't even need these. Or rather, I shouldn't de delete these, but I can deactivate these, rather, because uh, I don't actually need these, need these to move or be animated in any sort of way. So right now, you know, this is just uh, a piece of cloth. It's just dangling there. There isn't really much happening there. Let's go ahead in our scene and turn off the gravity within the scene. Let's go to our simulation properties, take this gravity value here at minus 9800. Let's put that to zero. While I'm there, I may as well put this uh, CPU in use value that's at 12 to 15, which is uh, one less than what I have so that uh, I can really get as much juice out of out of this as I can there. And uh, so now there's no more gravity within the scene. So this, this is like kind of in space there sort of thing. And now let's take this little piece of cloth that's within the middle there and let's put the shrinkage values that's set to 100 right now let's set them to 102 both on the weft and on the warp axis and let's simulate again so now we're starting to get you know kind of effect of like a uh like a bed drape that's kind of been been left and is kind of a bit loose or something there, kind of start to have this kind of effect there. And that's kind of what we want, you know, like, as you can see, I can kind of pull on this and I could actually at sort of any moment just stop the simulation. And I could export this out and I could use this as an alpha. One thing I also kind of like to do, if I really explicitly want to have memory fold somewhere, I'll make them using internal lines. And we'll do the equivalent of the uh, the dam standard that we had before within ZBrush. So here's a bunch of internal lines. And then I'll add uh, other internal lines that are kind of one for one sort of thing. And then let's take some of these internal lines, the ones that are near the top. Let's give them a full angle of, uh, let's say, 800 and uh, maybe 150. Let's take the ones that are under. And then let's give them full angle, let's say 210 degrees. And let's re-simulate. And uh, definitely my shrinkage is too high. Let me lower these back to 102. And now I can have these that are in there and they're going to sort of interplay with some of those other folds that are naturally and kind of organically appearing over the surface. Uh, and uh, I can add more of these, of course, you know. And there too, I can now export this out and use this as a stamp within ZBrush there. All right, let's go in ZBrush. Let's have some fun with this. See, I have a bunch of them here. Um, already there were just different Different flavors uh, had been created previously. This one too. So we have this, we have this one, and we have this one. We have all of these, right? So now let's turn these within alphas. The good old technique, right, is to simply use the MRGBC grabber there. Uh, MR GB. Oh yeah, I got that one right the first time. I'm like, usually MRBGZ. It's like, no, it's MRGBZ Grabber. Oof, I got that one. 
right off the bat. Oh yeah, so M is material, RGB, and Z is depth. Oh, that's what it means. That's what it means. Okay, let's do an MRGB Z grabber of this. So we say, let's say we want this. And there you go, we have an alpha of that. And uh, let's take the standard brush. Let's take a drag rectangle, select our alpha. And uh, not much happening. Here we go. Now, it's kind of normal that maybe um, it's going to kind of stick out like that a little bit too much. Uh, and if that happens, you can control that by simply um, going to your alpha menu and simply going to modify and then going down and playing around with the mid value that's here and probably setting this somewhere around 50 or so. Usually a good starting point. You'll see that it's going to be uh, a bit less. Uh, it's going to stick out a bit less. It's going to also kind of go in here a little bit. But yeah, like this is often the problem, actually. Um, you kind of get those nice memory folds in there. Everything's nice, but there's just there's too much amplitude to it, right? Now, you could lower the intensity, of course, but you're also going to lower the intensity of your memory folds. So maybe that's not really what you want. And so the solution for that is usually if you have to go through Photoshop. Um, fortunately, there isn't a uh, there isn't an easier way to that. You just have to go through Photoshop, really. Um, so let's do that. Let's take our alpha. Let's export it out. Yeah, I mean, the problem becomes very apparent, right? It's like we want the memory folds, but we don't want all these huge variations that that's happening over the surface, right? So Photoshop has a has a built in solution. So you go to filter, you go to other, you go to high pass. And this, as you can see, this allows you to neutralize the bigger variations that's on the surface, but you're still keeping those memory recalls that are there, you know, which ultimately is kind of what we are, uh, what we want in this particular case. Somewhere around here looks interesting. Let's go for, let's try that out. Could also, while we're there, boost the intensity of it. Like that. So we went from this to this here. So this will give us more, um, it's going to be less just big variations and it's going to be more surface details then. Yeah, so here we go. So we can now start to stamp this down. Now, uh, I haven't entirely understood yet why is it that this kind of introduces a bit of noise. I've seen this before. Because uh, I don't think it's going from Photoshop, because in Photoshop, our levels are still nice and solid there. It's unclear where it's coming from. But what I do know is that we can just blur it out, usually. Just applying a bit of blur on it is usually enough to smooth out all these kind of little noise that uh, or kind of banding that we were seeing there before. So yeah, so now we can start to really stamp a bunch of these if we want left and right to create like some memory wrinkles and add some memory wrinkles even faster to our characters. Um, can be here. It's like, yeah, maybe I want to have some here a little bit. Maybe let's lower the intensity of this. Now, of course, you know, creating this on a layer, creating a morph target, just like every other tertiary detail that we have created, let's say for a face is also obviously a great way, of course, to um, make sure that we are um, working in a way that's efficient and that is kind of modular, kind of gives us a chance to come back, you know, if ever there's something that isn't quite the way we wanted, of course, you know. So yeah, so, so now I can start to stamp down a few memory wrinkles left and right uh, and work even faster than if I was using the standard brush, uh, or rather the, uh, the um, damn standard, you know, but I still like the damn standard, though, because um, I often do like to have that 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 perfect control over where the memory wrinkles are, you know, of course, you know, combining the two of those together is often the best solution, of course.